Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's edition of Facebook Friday. If you're watching in the replay, hello. Thanks for watching. Today I've got three projects for you. I uh, am trying to do three projects each week. You guys seem to enjoy that. Um, it does take a bit of extra planning, especially typing up those um, project sheets, but I know that those are really helpful. So I'm gonna give us just a second. I see a couple of you joining. Hello, everybody. Um, I hope that I can see, I have my fan on today and it does look like it's moving the camera quite a bit. It's really hot here in South Texas and my office gets hot. I'm gonna turn it down because I can tell the camera is shaking a bit while we wait just a little bit. It is like really hot and humid this week or today. Well, I guess it has been the whole week. And so I'm making Christmas cards today, <laughs> Christmas projects, and it's so stinking hot. Okay, well, let's get started. First, I want to say thank you to everybody who entered for the giveaway last week. I have a winner. I gave away, I was giving away the Season of Whimsy hostess set, and somebody who is calling themselves Miss Joan was the random winner. So Joan, I'm gonna email you, congratulations. Um, I want to say thank you though, you guys, for going over there and entering that, because last week I added something, I asked for suggestions, what you would like to see me do during Facebook Live, and you guys gave me some amazing suggestions. So I'm gonna keep that there on the raffle copter. If you enter, you don't have to answer that question. If you don't have any ideas for me, no problem. But if there's something that you're wondering about, maybe a stamp set you wanna see, let me know, because that really helps me um, have some direction in what to plan for you guys. So thank you. Um, and these projects are directly from some of, that, some of those things you suggested last week. So this week over on my blog today, this post is gonna go up right now, hopefully. Um, if it's not up or if the link doesn't work, just give me an hour and when I'm done, I'll fix it. But this week I'm gonna draw two winners. I've got two extra sets of blends. These are our new Stampin' Blends, our alcohol markers that I'm sure you've heard me yelling at the top of my lungs about. They are amazing. So, um, Oh, I'm reading your y'all's comments. Hi, Sherry. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, so these are amazing. So I'm gonna choose two winners, and one of you will get the oh, rich razzleberry. I can't tell. Dark. Yeah, rich razzleberry and pumpkin pie. Two good colors. Okay. So make sure at some point before next Thursday you go over to my blog and enter for the prize this week, and get keep those suggestions coming. So this week, um, last week actually before I went live, I was playing with this set, Season Like Christmas. Um, one of Stampin' Up's most popular stamp set is called Lovely as a Treat. Similar, it's got this kind of look. And so I thought, you know what, I need to play with this because I think this is gonna be one of those really popular, easy to use sets. So I was playing with this and then I asked you guys to give me suggestions. So over the weekend, I didn't do anything. And on Monday when I pulled up, what you guys had said so far, you said, I saw several people say embossing paste, so I'm gonna do some embossing to paste. And then the best suggestion I had, which I was just, I had never in my mind, you wanted to know how I size boxes, how I make a box to go around a certain um, treat or gift that I'm giving. So that's where this project um, came from. So we're gonna do that today also. So thank you so much to those of you who suggested those things. All right, so as always, I'm gonna do three projects. The project sheets are over on my blog. They look like this. All the supplies are listed. Any measurements that you need are on there. Um, the hostess code for November is, this is the hostess code. You guys have really been taking advantage of this. I, I send the three make and takes, the three make and take kits to anybody who places a $30 order um, by next Monday. And wow, thank you. So many of you took advantage of it uh, last week. It's, it seems to be growing and I need to schedule time in my week to make sure that I have set aside to prep those for you guys. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. So again, these three projects will be coming to you. Um, use that hostess code. If you can't see it very well on here, it's also on the project sheet and over on my blog. Okay, okay, enough chit chat. Let's get started. Um, 
So the first thing that I wanted to do was show you guys embossing paste. It was one of my favorite things when I saw the new catalog. I don't know if you guys can see it, but um, I said, oh, I can't wait. I'm gonna use that embossing paste a lot. It's um, kind of artsy. It makes me feel um, like I'm doing more mixed media. It takes me out of the normal uh, paper crafting. Um, but it's um, it's not not too difficult, and it has big wow factors. So um, the first thing I wanted to do was make snow on this this beautiful tree. Um, I wanted to show you another project that I did when it first came out. This is kind of how um, Stampin' Up! has the embossing paste designed for us. They have the masks or the... Um, stencil you know it's like a stencil and you put it down and then you smear the embossing paste over the stencil and when you peel the stencil off you have the embossing paste um, so I, I've done some of that and then I kind of put it to the side and haven't used it anymore but it's really good to create this 3d texture and that's what we're gonna do today um, we're gonna actually just do this tag right here and then at the end of the video I'll come back because we have to give this some time to dry and we'll put it together um, so let's stamp first. This tree is, um, I guess you would call it two-step stamping, but really it's several stamps, several step stamping, depending on which stamps you're going to use. I'm going to use this one, this one, and then the, the trunk. And then later on, we'll even use this one. So you can see it's like four-step stamping. Um, and because they're photopolymer, you can see exactly where you're stamping. And it kind of has a watercolor look, so you don't have to be perfect. Because I can tell you probably eight times out of 10 tries, my stamps don't line up perfectly. So don't feel bad about yourself. Um, I, you know, it's not, it's not super easy to get things lined up, but this one has um, a lot of wiggle room because it has that kind of watercolor look. So it doesn't matter if they are exactly where they're supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to use, you know, and you really could play around with this and see what colors you like. I'm going to use wild wasabi, which is a light green and garden green, which is a darker green. Um, and you want to do, let's make sure I can remember. Okay. You want to do the first uh, image with a lighter ink. So the one that has more tree, can you see how this one has more tree than this one? This one's a little more blotchy. So we're going to do the more, the more solid image in the lighter green, which is the wild wasabi. And make sure you just tap, tap, tap lightly. You don't want to get ink everywhere. And just going to stamp right there. I don't have my mat this week but I didn't need it. Look at that. Perfect. All right. Well, wasabi is a beautiful color. Um, and I don't use it enough since I've been using it this week on this tree. I'm thinking, wow, I need to pull that color out more often. All right. So now this one you can see is less of the tree image and you can see where it needs to go. Um, you can see how there's like an open spot there and an open spot there. So I just kind of aim for that. Look at the bottom and the top and make sure they're where they need to go and go with a garden green. Oh, I love it. It looks fancy, you know, but it's not really, like it's pretty simple. All right, now this stamp I love because you can see the, the um, trunk of the tree is in several spots and it's just one stamp. Look how they've designed it so that you can just stamp it one time. I'm gonna use early espresso. Now when you stamp this one, you wanna just do it lightly. Don't smash and push real hard because then you're gonna get ink here and here and here and then it's gonna get where it's not supposed to. So just tap, tap, tap. So you're just getting the raised image. And then we're going to line this up in those kind of open bare spots. And there you have it. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Very, very pretty. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the embossing paste. Um, a couple of words, a couple of tips. The embossing paste comes in a jar like this, and ooh, look at that, lots of ink on me. Um, when you open it, it is sealed the first time, and then after that, you gotta make sure you close it really good because I had one that it didn't close very well and it was like cement. <laughs> it dried pretty pretty uh, quickly. And you can see I've only used this jar um, on that card right there. So you can see it's not going to come filled to the tip top of your jar. So if you get it, don't freak out and think they shorted you. It's just they've made the jar bigger than the amount that they're gonna 
give you, okay? So don't don't freak out about that. I know when we first got it, people were, were worried that they got gypped, but that's just, that's just how much of contents is in the jar. All right, so this is one of the palette knives. And if you noticed, I didn't clean it very well last time, and so now I have concrete on there. I mean, this stuff dries hard and it does not come off. Um, so you want to make sure you work quickly and that you clean off your tools quickly, your masks um, immediately. Don't even let it sit there. Just immediately go clean it because it does dry really fast. So the um, palette knives, I think there are three in the pack. So I'm just going to get the little pointy one and I'm just going to get a little bit of this. That's probably too much just a little bit at a time, and I'm gonna go in here and just kind of tap where I want some of that snow. And whatever it looks like when you lift your palette knife, that's the way it is going to dry. It's not gonna shrink, it's not going to flatten, um, so make sure you like it because it's going to look exactly that way. Now, on this kind of deal, it's okay because it's just snow blobs. But when I was using the masks, I realized that any kind of um, section where it was too thick or streaky, that it dried just like that. So you gotta make sure you get it just the way you want it before it dries. So see how I'm just kind of like, you know, blobbing it on. There's really no secret. All right, so now this palette knife is pretty much ruined already because I didn't clean it last time. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but I do wanna make sure that I close this immediately. And this tub goes a long way. Um, I've used one whole tub, um, but I did like 45 cards um, with it for, a, for a, a group. So it goes a long way. Okay, so now let me set that over there. I'm gonna, you could leave it like that, and I did on some of the ones that I was playing with, and it's beautiful. I did like to kind of tap down on some of those points. I didn't want them like pointy. And you can just kind of do that with your finger or your palette knife if, you're, if you have a clean palette knife. All right, so now I'm gonna take our Dazzling Diamonds Glitter. And if, ooh, if you have used Dazzling Diamonds Glitter, you know that you will then be wearing it for the next week. It is like any other, it is like no other glitter I've ever used. It is very, very fine and it gets on everything. I will have it on my face, my clothes, my dog will have it on him, my husband will have it on him um, for the next few days because it gets everywhere. So just prepare yourself. But you know what? Look how fancy and glittery it is. I don't know if you guys can see. It's worth it. It's worth it. It doesn't help when I blow it across the office too. Okay, so this little container, you can see the container that comes in. I got these like at TJ Maxx and keep my embossing stuff in there, they're really nice. Okay, so there we have it. Um, let me get my paper towel. There we have the snow and it's gonna dry and really I think 10 minutes is all you need. It dries pretty quickly, but for since we're live, we're just gonna set it aside and I'll put it back together. I'll put the card together. Um, in a little while. All right, so there is project number one. Let's see where I can put it. All right, so now project number two, we're gonna do the same tree, but I'm gonna do it on designer series paper and I'm gonna add, add some heat embossing on there. Isn't that pretty? This is a funny card, if my friend Kay is watching. She did a card years ago, several years ago we had a tree and she did a beautiful card um, that looked just like this. And then I cased it, which means copy. I copied it for a class and I loved it. And I actually saw it pop up on my um, Pinterest feed recently and I was like, okay, I'm gonna copy that card again because this, this uh, stamp is perfect for that setup. Okay, so this is um, the Mary let me make sure I don't lose that card. This is the, what are we calling it? I gotta look at the notes. Uh, Mary Music Designer Series Paper. It's thin and it's beautiful. Diff there are several different designs in each packet. It's called Specialty Paper because it's thinner than normal paper. And it is, um, there's quite, a, I think there's four sheets of each pattern in the pack. And it goes a long way, I've used it a lot. Um, okay, we're gonna use the same colors this time. Um, the Wild Wasabi for the background for that background tree. 
let's see, where do I want to do it? Up here in the middle. Now all the measurements for this card and the other projects and the ink, li the list of the inks that I'm using, everything are on those project sheets. Whoops, I gotta use that before I close it. Are on the project sheets over on my blog. It's a PDF and the link hopefully is working. If not, someone will let me know and I will fix it. I have been having such a time with links lately. I try to shorten them so that they're not so long and then for some reason that kind of breaks the link. But anyway, hopefully it's working and, and it'll um, be there for you. All right, so same thing, um, early espresso. You can get creative and do some different colors if you want. We have several greens. I'm even gonna use lemon lime twist on the next one. And there's the, I keep wanting to say stem, but that is a trunk. All right, so now I'm gonna do heat embossing, which, where's my embossing buddy? Right here in front of me. This is an embossing buddy. If you haven't seen this before, it's like a bag of some kind of powder. And before you heat emboss, you wanna just go all over your paper because this is gonna remove any kind of static um, that you have on there that would hold on to those embossing powders in places you don't want them. And it is, I think, in my opinion, it's critical to use this when you're embossing. Do you guys um, use your embossing buddy? Uh, I Every time I forget to use it that and then I try to emboss, I have to throw it away because those little, those little grains stick everywhere. All right, so here is stamp number four for this tree. You can see it's like little lights. And I'm stamping it in Versamark. And Versamark is a clear ink, so you can't see it. It's designed for embossing so that the powder will stick to it. And I'm going to use gold embossing powder and hope that it sticks in only the places it needs to. Yep, looks good. My embossing buddy did a great job. I was so worried I would forget to use the embossing buddy today on the video because I've done that before. <laughs> okay, so this is the heat tool. Our heat tool has two settings and it's gonna take a minute so I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear me as I'm doing this, but um, you don't wanna hold it directly to the paper. You know, see how I'm kind of kind of wiggling around? I don't know, I do that with my hair dryer too, so I don't burn my skin. That way it doesn't burn the paper. So now you can see they're kind of magically lighting up. Can you guys see? See that, how it changes from that dull gold to that beautiful shiny gold. This really adds a lot of pop to your card. And um, I've told this story before, but when I was a, a brand new stamper, I mean brand new, I had not stamped, I wanted to do that embossing really badly. Um, and so I was cheap and I bought the, the powder and the ink, but I didn't buy the heat tool. And I came home and I tried to do it and I tried to use my hair dryer and it totally didn't work. So, lesson learned. I had to use the heat tool. And they say in the old days, they used to, they would hold it over their stove. <laughs> and so the embossing powder would change um, that way because that would get hot enough. But with my luck, I would burn the house down. All right, so I'm just putting it on a real red card base with some garden green cardstock. And it looks like I didn't cut this right. So I'm gonna see how it's hanging over. So I'm just gonna trim it with my trimmer. Oh, you know what? My, uh oh, my little, I don't know what you call this. My gutter guide fell out. All right, come on, go in. All right, let's see if my blade is gonna, if my blade, it was working earlier really well. Let's see if it's gonna behave on this end. There we go. All right, nice and straight. Oh, I need a side table to put all this stuff on. I've got too much stuff on here. Okay, so now I'm gonna use some vellum and I'm gonna stamp that sentiment in my early espresso. Um, when you stamp on vellum, you have to be really, really careful because it will smear. So, so that I don't do that, since my heat tool's here, I'm just gonna hit it with a heat tool paper isn't as porous I guess so the ink sits right on top I don't know that sounds kind of scientific oh a toaster too yes I have heard that you can emboss with a toaster or set your house on fire you know 
I, I just would say better safe for somebody like me. Better safe than sorry. I better use the heat tool. All right, so it looks like maybe I probably should have put my tree up a little bit higher. You see that, you guys? But that's all right, it'll still work. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of fast fuse. I don't wanna use too much because then it'll you might be able to see it. Just a little bit. I think fast fuse shows through the least of the adhesives that we have. Yeah, I would like that tree up a little bit higher. Oh well, it's still cute. All right, some linen thread. I like the linen thread with this tree because I feel like the tree is kind of rustic and so is the linen thread. All right, just tie it around there, tie your bow. Your heat tool is 25 years old, Judy. Oh my gosh, that is a good investment. I don't think I have anything that's 25, that has lasted, you know, 25 years. Things these days don't last that long. Wow, that is awesome. It is a good investment. Okay, so now where is my paper? Uh oh, yep, okay, here it is. All right, so I'm gonna put these little flags up here and I'm gonna use this banner triple punch. This is another one of those tools that I use all the time. My stitch shape thinlets, my banner punch, what else, my paper piercer, my, my score, my simply scored. I, those are things that, that like if I had to be on a, an island, if I was stranded on an island, those were the things that I would take. This designer series paper is the quilted Christmas paper. And the, the, um, the red is the red glimmer. And I had to make it a little bit longer than I needed it because it wouldn't fit in my punch. I wouldn't be able to hold it and see it. That's why it's a little bit long. There we go. Last thing are these awesome wooden elements. They're called wooden elements. And I'm just going to use, let's see what I used last time. I'm going to use this one, this little star. These are in the annual catalog not in the holiday catalog and just put that right there and there we have it very pretty isn't it you can see how the paper here is different um it's they're whole sheets of music paper so you, wherever you cut it just depends on where that would be um i liked that at the top so i made sure i cut it that way all right so there's that card i hope you guys like it let's see let me get organized and we will do the next project which is sizing a box now before I start sizing a box, I want to preface this by saying, when I am in my studio all alone without anybody watching me, sometimes it takes me several tries to get a box correctly, to make get, get it made and sized correctly. Sometimes it takes me five or six tries. So I want, to, I want you guys to know that this um, isn't always easy. Sometimes it takes several tries. So um, be go easy on yourself if you're gonna design try to start designing your own boxes. It is, I am not very good, I mean, you know, cutting and sizing things. My mom always said that my grandfather always said, measure twice, cut once. And I never follow that rule. I always make, make mistakes. So just know that sometimes when you're sizing something, you're going to screw it up, but keep trying and trying um, and you'll eventually get it. Um, one thing that I recommend when you are just trying to figure out the size for a project is get out your old cardstock. Pull out scraps so that you don't screw up all your good cardstock because then you're really going to get frustrated. All right, so we're going to make this box and inside are these jumbo caramel wa wafers. I found these at Big Lots um, about a month ago. And I have seen them a couple other places. And I think that the ladies in Europe also use these a lot. I've seen them. Um, but they were, I think they were like 50 cents. And I thought they were really cute. So I thought, let's make a box for this. And that's why it's skinny. All right, so what I do when I start is I get my grid paper. I think that your grid paper is the best choice for um, when, when you are really trying to sketch out a, a box. Because you've got these straight lines here. And so I put it here and I'm going to draw around it to see exactly what size. Oops, I think I'm going to go in a little bit shorter because that wrapper will fold. You're going to see exactly what 
size your boxes. You've got the grid lines there for you, so you know it's straight, right? All right, so we know that the bottom of the box is going to be this size. And so you can use here, you could measure, you could count. I'm just gonna use my um, ruler, so it's five inches long, and we're gonna need it to be three and three fourths, okay? So that's just the base. Now we need sides to our box. I'm gonna make a box that opens like, like a shirt box that you would wrap a shirt in, you know, that you get from the store. It has a bottom and a top that are exactly the same. So we need four sides, and all four sides need to be the same height. And this is really skinny, so I'm just gonna make them half an inch because my box doesn't need to be deep. If it was this, you know, if it was something that was this wide, then I would make my sides that wide. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna draw, um, on your grid paper, two uh, squares is half an inch. So I can just sketch that out like that. Okay, I need one of those, and I need one over here, and I need one here, like that, like that. So that's, those are the sides. But our paper, we don't want to have to cut like that. So our paper is going to look like this. And that's all you need. You need to know that um, the base, you know, like what, what size bottom and what side are your sides. So then I'm going to, if I put half an inch here, this is half an inch and this is half an inch, then I know that that's a one inch that I need to add to that. So that means it's, my paper is going to be six inches long. I feel like I'm teaching back in first grade, you guys. And then um, three and three fourths, if this is three and three fourths, I need to add half an inch for this side and half an inch for that side. So that means I'm adding a whole inch, which means four and three fourths. And that's it, I mean, really, you know? So my paper is gonna be six by four and three fourths, and I'm gonna score it at, at half an inch on all four sides, right? You guys following? It's not rocket science but it does sometimes take a minute to wrap your brain around what you need to do all right so what did I say six inches by four and three-fourths and I'm gonna use soft suede my favorite brown and I'm gonna cut two of them because I need a, a top and a bottom and then what did we say four and three-fourths so six by four and three-fourths. I wanted to say, I started to say this a minute ago, that it takes a lot of guts for me to do this in front of you guys because I could really easily screw this up. And I don't like to screw things up on Facebook Live. <laughs> it ruins my day. But um, I made this beforehand, so hopefully I don't screw it up. All right, so we have two of them, right? Now, you could use your scoring tool here, but I prefer the Simply Scored, which I'm gonna bring out. Got a bunch of stuff piled on it, of course. I like this, this is just my preference for scoring. And I'm gonna show you a little trick in a minute that you wouldn't be able to do on, on the trimmer if you use that. All right, so we said half an inch, right? All the sides need to be half an inch. So I'm just gonna turn it and do half an inch on all four sides. Now, if you were to do that with this one, they would go together and it would be kind of tight. You kind of have to wiggle it. So a few years ago, I learned a trick somewhere on the internet that you want to make your lid just a hair bigger. Um, I have tried to do it, oh, well, let me just do an eighth of an inch bigger. No, it doesn't work. Um, you want to use just a shim. And this is literally five post-it notes. That's what I use every time is a stack of post-it notes. And I'm gonna put it over here on the side. Now. If I was to score half an inch like this and then come over here and score half an inch here, that would only give me, it would only shift things over. But if I score half an inch and turn it each time, then that means it's giving me half an inch plus a tiny little smidge over here, which is gonna make this lid just a tiny bit bigger and it's gonna slide onto that bottom easier. Now I'm gonna write T on here for top so that I remember and I don't screw that up. All right, now this is a simple box construction. You guys have seen me do this many times. Um, I think I, do I need this anymore? Well, I'll just leave it there. Um, fold in all your score lines and snip right here and right here. And then on the opposite side, do the same thing. Snip, snip. 
All right, now I'm just gonna put a little bit of Fast Fuse on each of those little corners. And if you wanted to, you could cut those at an angle um, because sometimes, and you can even see on mine, it's a little bit off. But I don't think my recipient would mind that much. All right, so there's our bottom. Let's make sure our snack fits in there, perfect. All right, now here's our top, same thing. Snip, snip, fold in all, let's see, I want that to eat, oh, it doesn't matter, because I'm gonna put paper over it. So do all that, fold them all good, and if you're fancy and you have your bone folder, you can use your bone folder to get a really good fold on there. I never remember to pull my bone folder out. Like I told you guys in the past, I'm a fast crafter. I want it done fast. And so to take the time to find my bone folder, I just don't do it. All right, let's see. The lid should go right on. And it does, I think. What is happening? Oh, I put that in too far. See how I push that in too far? It needs to be even. So let's make it even. Come on. All right. There we go. And it's like a little shirt box, right? Just a bottom and a lid, just like that. All right. So does that help you guys? Does that make sense to how you could size things around, you know, whatever you find at your local grocery store, or if you were gonna make even that like a gift card, if you had a gift card, you could make a little box like this for your gift card. This is um, the, oh, Fancy Foil, what's it called, you guys? The Foil DSP in the um, annual catalog, Foil Frenzy, yeah, Foil Frenzy. All right, Lemon Lime Twist, that's one of those colors. And so, oh, I, I knew I was gonna need that paper if I took it away. So I thought, let's do a tree in Lemon Lime Twist and see what that looks like. And this time I'm not gonna use two different colors. I'm gonna use the same color. And because I'm stamping them on top of each other, the second stamp will be darker. Now I'm gonna do it over here on the edge so that I have room for my sentiment. Make sure I've got that ink off of there. See how I clean my stamps? <laughs> I know, I know I'm bad. Okay, right on top with Lemon Lime Twist again. And it does have some different variation. Um, on my sample, you can see it a little bit better. Um, it's darker. All right, then I'm not gonna use Early Espresso this time. I'm gonna use Soft Suede because our box is Soft Suede. Time is it, I need to make sure. Okay, good, I've got plenty of time. I would hate to not remember to pick up my kids from school. They would not like that. All right, and then I wanted to add just a little bit of sparkle, so I'm gonna take my uh, Wink of Stella, and you gotta be careful with your Wink of Stella because it does act as a paintbrush, and it will pick up that ink and spread it. So don't get crazy, just kind of do some little, you know, dab, 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 dab. And um, while I'm thinking about it, I want to let you guys know that I will not be here next Friday. I'll be in Salt Lake City for On Stage Live, so there will be no Facebook Friday next week. And then the week following that um, is a crazy, crazy, ooh, I need to clean that, is a crazy, crazy, crazy week for me. I have two events and a very large retreat. Um, so I'm not going to say that I'm not going to do Facebook Live, but I'm going to say I might be able to do it. It just depends on how prepared I can get for everything. Is this the stamp? Nope, this isn't even the stamp that I used. This is the bigger sentiment and real red. So I'll let you guys know. I want to do Facebook Live. I'm really starting to enjoy it. Um, but I just, I, I need to make sure that I'm prepared for all those events um, as well. Okay, so we're going to use the rest of that linen thread and some lemon lime twist ribbon. And this is the 1 8 inch handheld hole punch. We're gonna tie that around this lemon lime twist bow. 
these uh, fancy packaging makes your 50 cent gift look like, hey, she really went all out. And these are a little less, um, this tag especially is less um, tedious than the other two. And you could get a lot of these made, I think, without any trouble. All right, so there's the lemon lime woven twist. And then I'm going to put that linen thread through there. Yes, um, thank you, Judy. I will be posting pictures from Salt Lake City. Um, we have this really strict um, gag order where we cannot post pictures. They give us the new catalog. So we'll get the occasions catalog and the celebration catalog that doesn't go live until January. And then we're under a really strict gag order on what we can post. <coughs> Excuse me. So unfortunately, that is frustrating. I can't, you know, it's hard for me to post things, um, making sure there's nothing in the background, nothing, you know, giving away the the products that we're not supposed to show. So, but I will, I will definitely be updating you guys um, right here on this Facebook group. All right, there you go, guys. What do you think? That box, hopefully my little drawings here kind of give you an idea of how to size a box. Um, it's, it's uh, that's just simple box construction. And I'm gonna keep that. I think that was a great suggestion. And I don't know, three or four of you actually said that on the, um, on the, on the, um, Raffle copter, that's the word I'm looking for. And I, I really appreciated those suggestions. So m remember, if you have an idea, um, let me know so that I can plan for it. I like to have some, some direction. Okay, so let's go back over here to the first project and the embossing paste is totally dry. You can like touch it and it's hard. That stuff dries really quickly. And so I'm gonna put my card together. This is a real red card base and I'm using that cute quilted Christmas uh-oh, got to put this one on first. Um, DSP again. It's in the very front of the holiday catalog. I like it because it's real red and garden green. Very traditional colors. Um, and it, I like to go kind of monochromatic. I think if you start pulling in too many colors, um, your project gets kind of crazy. And I really like to stick with one or two colors and a neutral. So this paper is really good for that. Remember all the measurements for these projects are over on my blog on that project sheet. Have any of you tried the project sheets, Erica? Uh, I'm reading comments. <laughs> Have you guys um, try, clicked on that link yet? Is it working? Thank you, Sue. Your, your comment is what I was uh, reading. Thank you so much. I don't know how other people can read comments and talk at the same time. I can't, my brain totally shuts down. All right, dimensionals there. Um, this is just a little banner that I cut and that sentiment that I had here that I said was the wrong one a minute ago, now I have to clean it over here. Um, this one says, thinking of you at Christmas. And I'm just gonna stamp it right here. And, uh-oh, it's getting towards the end so I know everything's lost. Oh, it's right here. Somebody made a great suggestion last week, said I needed, um, oh, this needs to go higher. I need like a magnetic frame to throw my framelits on. And yes, I do need that, you're right. I need like a bucket to throw things in. I should like make an adhesive bucket and a ink bucket. That way when I'm working, I can just throw them in. And if I'm looking for it again, I'll know where it is while I'm talking to you guys. This is our 1 8 inch solid real red ribbon. And it's very dainty. And uh, cute, it goes great on a card because it doesn't add a lot of bulk. But for my big fingers, uh, it's a little bit um, hard for me to tie a bow with this, which I don't have problems with twine. I think this one is because it's that kind of silky, slippery material. And a glue dot. And there you have it. All right, you guys, we are done. Let's pull back the original three projects. We had two cards and our fun little gift box. I hope you guys like them. Um, remember this week, uh, the ordering incentive is I'll send you all three make and takes. If you ordered last week, I mailed those out on Tuesday. I got them done Tuesday and sent them out already to you. Um, so if you ordered um, last week, they should be um, hopefully by Monday, they'll be to you. Um, so if you want to order in the next 
four days, please use this hostess code and I will send you all three make and take packets um, that use the Season Light Christmas stamp set. I think this is a great one. It's very reasonably priced to, oh, I can't remember, yeah, 17. That, that's one of the cheaper ends on our stamp sets. Um, so let me know if you have questions. Don't forget to enter the giveaway for the stamp and blends because there's no Facebook live next week. I'll just have to announce it on a post somewhere. So you guys will have to be looking for it. All right. Thanks so much, you guys. I hope you have a great weekend and let me know if you have questions. Bye.